Yo, 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 what up? Inside the box family, how you doing? I wish, you know what I mean? True, true blessings upon all of you. Welcome back. Um, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and like. Welcome to the family. All right, so if any anybody has any suggestions, opinions, comments, make sure you comment in that comment section. All right, bomb. This episode is going to be about oppression. Um, it's another D-Rock special. And this episode is very special. Um, it's crazy how this, how this works, how this all aligns. Um, because D-Rock, of course, is talking about from his perspective when he was very young. And we're talking about over a decade ago. He's um, already got 15 years in. So the stories you're being told um, by him is, you know, way back then. His perspective when he was thinking inside the box. Now he definitely thinks inside, um, out of the box, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so he definitely now thinks outside the box today. So that's why he um, tell his stories because pretty much he's telling you real stories of how he once thought inside the box and now how you can change your perspective and you know move forward in life and, and live a much righteous life so to say um yeah so make a long story short and what makes today's episode so special is because it's the death anniversary of my stepfather Cisco, may you rest in peace. I love you forever. Um, you'll always be in my memories. Um, and Lopes, they both died in a car, car accident um, together, sad to say. Um, yeah, today makes five years, so shout out to them. They always gonna be memories. I mean, they always gonna be in our memories. Uh, I didn't know Lopes personally, but D-Rock definitely did. Um, he ran into Los um, when he was, I believe it's Auburn, when he, when he first went to Auburn, um, Auburn um, Correctional Facility. And um, pretty much he, Los, Los was dropping some jewels on D-Rock once he came across him. He was pretty much telling him that pretty much like the way you're thinking is inside the box. You got to think outside the box, you know? can't be part of the system. You can't be thinking, you know, can't be so oppressing your, your your fellow men. Like do to your brother as you would want done to you. All right, what well, makes this even more crazier, and it may sound like a coincidence to some, I don't believe in coincidences. Too many coincidences have, has happened in my life to it's like, yo, that's like a movie, so. It's like, how many coincidences got to happen to me to be like, yo, it's not a coincidence. <laughs> Just the universe telling me I'm on the right path. Salute to the universe. <laughs> yeah, the, um, what makes this even more crazy is that we was talking about um, what should be the next episode, what should be the next topic. And we came up with oppression, like oppressing the others, um, taking a commissary, you know, making them wash your drawers, things of that nature. It gets crazy in it. Things that they make them do in there, ridiculous. Um, and pretty much um, Los, which it's just his death anniversary today, the day this is dropping, he's the one that told them that this isn't the right thing to do. You know, pretty much dropped jewels on him on how he was thinking inside the box. And salute to Los, I thank God that my brother ran into you and you were able to drop those jewels on him. Very few people in the world like this, especially in those um, behind the walls like that. So I appreciate you, Los. May you rest in peace. And Bong, I'm going to hit y'all with a side story because it fits perfect with the topic at hand um, with oppression. This is a story about someone that, that was a victim. Well, really... The people that did it and him, he, he was a victim of oppression because, um, all right. So this guy, um, named ice on Rikers Island, I got there on Rikers Island on Thursday. This guy got killed on a Saturday. 
I believe it. I could be, you know what I mean? I, I could, I could be. Don't, don't quote me on this because I could be mistaken on the, on the days. But I believe when I, when I went to Rikers Island, it was a Thursday, and on a Saturday, which was two days later, a kid named Ice got killed. Um, just based off this system, pretty much like they were trying to oppress him. They were trying to say, "Yo, do this, do that. You got to give commissary. You got to give up calls." And he said, "Nah." And what they did was put him in a full Nelson. They put they put their arms through here, arms through here, and then they locked their arms so it you can't fend for yourself. It's usually a real big dude that does it, and um, they beat him so much and hit him hit him in his rib. Boom, 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 and they he bled internally. They hit him so hard he bled internally. They they hit his ribs so hard he bled internally. Um, which ultimately um, resulted into his death. And um, yeah, because he did, he said he didn't want to um, be with it. They killed him. And um, the kids that did it, the adolescents that did it, got a very long time. Some got life, I heard. Some got 20 years um, and better. And I even saw them. They was crying. They was crying once they got sentenced. I saw them with my own two eyes. They was crying. It's too late now, man. Like, and I not, and it's sad because they want us to oppress each other. They don't want us to build one another up. They want us to, you know what I mean, fall victim to these inside the box mentalities. And it's sad, man. But yeah, that's. I just wanted to tell y'all that story real quick because pretty much like. It's sad, man, the harsh realities of how we fall victim to our mentalities of thinking inside the box. All right, enough with me, though. We're going to get straight to the story. And who better to tell you than the man himself, D-Rock? Let's get straight to it. Enjoy. Because I was gladiator school. That wasn't that wasn't a joke, my nigga. Regular. And then what it was about the adolescents that was worse. It was that the niggas that wasn't strong would get preyed on so bad, bro. And it, it and it was to a point where I started becoming a part of it. To where like even at one point I had Sincerely's cousin washing my drawers. So so now, nah. so we on a visit. She come see me. Her cousin is on a visit with her all whatever her people. So the nigga, he calls her. So she says his real name. I forgot the nigga's real name. He said, oh, I said, yo, that's my cousin. It's, 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 jo it's Joseph. Um. Yeah, with some shit like that. So I'm like, oh, what? I'm like, yo, damn, man. That's your cousin? I'm like, yo, my fault, yo. Uh, that's gonna be, I'm like, yo, that's my nigga. That's my cousin now. Fuck it. That's just my cousin. She's like, well, what happened? <laughs> I'm like, yo, I've been violating this. <laughs> 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 I'm like, yo. He, was like, he never talked bad about you. He never admitted that. He was just like, yeah, you know, I always used to do things for him. Like, he was a little hurt. He was a little hurt. No, nah, that's what I meant. No, nah, but that was yeah, my it yeah, but but it's just crazy to see how just life worked though. Like you know, I, you know, I don't know this nigga on the wall. This nigga is my girl's cousin. You know what I'm saying? But just like those experiences, like something like that, jail turned me into that, and I started praying on niggas. You know what I'm saying? And I started doing stupid shit. I started doing shit like this. We be sitting bored in the day room. I'm bored. I don't got nothing to do. These niggas are some bitch niggas. Yo, listen, stupid, get on the wall. Get on the wall. What do you mean? Get your fucking hands on the wall. Like, I'm the police. Get on the wall, stupid. What are you doing? What do you mean, get on the wall? Yo, listen, my nigga. You're going to do two things. You're going to eat this Listen, they're going to eat this cockroach right here from this floor. Go eat this cockroach right here on this toilet, on this dirty-ass toilet right here. You got to eat it from the toilet. Or you got to walk around on all fours, and every time somebody calls you, you got to bark like a dog. And come to them. Nigga, what choice you gonna make? One nigga pick eat the cockroach, the next nigga be barking like a dog all day. Niggas is just doing stupid shit like this because we kids and we dumb and 
we were stupid. You know what I'm saying? This is like dumb shit we used to do. But that's calm, that yeah. karma right there, the shit that I used to do back then, is why I feel like a lot of the, the bad shit happened to me in the future. Because I was doing stupid shit like that back then, but not being conscious of really what I was doing. Because it's like, this is all I know. Oh, oh shit, you gotta be tough or you gonna be pussy. It's no yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pray on niggas or become the prey. That's, you see, it's, it's and, that, and that's sad. You know, you know, and I was sad the that that's exactly what Rikers Island did. And not for nothing, Rikers Island is the best teacher before you make it up north. Uh, me then, me now. This is me again, D-Rock speaking in values, and I want to point out who I was then, and how I learned, and who I am now. So the kid I was then was very impulsive, would always follow, would always just be around people, and just want to be there to fit in. Me now doesn't need to be around people, is comfortable with his own skin, and understands that in order to do good, you have to treat people good. If you want to feel good, you treat people good because then they'll just treat you good. Whatever you want yeah, to yeah, do. You wanna... exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, audience, in this world, man, if you can learn anything, learn that. If you do good, good will come back. And I promise you, the laws of the universe are real. And if you are thinking it, if you believe in it, it will manifest. And I'm going to end that one with that. And I promise I went through the whole foster care thing. No mom. You know, dad was a drug addict. You know, he passed away. But, you know, at the end of the day, he gave me life. So I, I, there's always a positive I could take from something. And that's me today. So when I look at that 17 year old kid, I say, What made you be like that? I just say, Well, let him to go and, you know, hang out with the wrong crowd, do the wrong things. Well, he just felt accepted when he did certain things. So. Him not knowing how to be around the right people and him not knowing how to feel like he can be small or just have that self-esteem to, to want to do more, he just ended up succumbing to the crowd that was negative. And that's what led him to eventually being locked up and in the situation that he was that, that he ended up in. And, and it's still into this day as a 33-year-old man, but a 33-year-old man that has waken up. So getting back to, to, to the ending of that, you know, certain people in my life I caused path with taught me a lot of different things. Um, one of these guys mm-hmm. that I'm about to bring up is no longer with me today, but I bring him up because when it comes to Rikers Island and oppressing people, this man taught me how to look at things differently. You know, and when I say Rikers Island, you know the way the, the young adolescent ways is going crazy, fighting each other, and he just... He just gave me a perspective to, to look outside the box and just analyze things and ask yourself, why? What am I doing it for? What did I gain from it? And if, if, if it was worth it. And when you sit down and really think about all the things that I did, yeah, I had to survive and go through it, but every kid that was in that same pen with me was led in the wrong direction. So what we did, we tried to hurt each other and started trying to uplift each other. And that's the difference from D-Rock then and D-Rock now. D-Rock wants to uplift his people, all his Spanish, all his blacks, all his Asians, every people, because we all are people, and every kid has a shot. Any kid could be the next president. Any kid could be the next great person, the next Usain Bolt, the next Kobe Bryant. Any kid can do that. And that's what I'm here to send a message out to let them know, even though from my experiences and what, what I'm going through, you got a guy here that, that's, that's learning. He's learning from what he's going through. And he's paying the price. And prison is not the right way to go. It is not cool. There's nothing cool about it. You go through a lot, not only with your peers, but you you constantly getting kicked while you're damned by these police. You're getting fed the bottom of the barrel of food. You're sleeping on some shit that's like thinner than a fucking cardboard box. You heard. I got to go right now. Hold on. Be right back inside the box. Hold on. We in the building. Hold on. That mindset, and so you hear me? These people is crazy. They still don't know how to count. I don't know how they got this job, but um, 
So so basically what I was talking about, yeah, back to it, is just that mindset and me meeting different people along the way and them teaching me how to think differently. And one person was my man Los in memory of man, he's no longer with me, but I remember him spending them yards with me and always telling me, Yo, bro, everything that good is ain't gold. And you gotta watch who you're around, you gotta avoid from being around people that are not good for you. Don't go to places that are not good for you and don't do things that are not that are not good for you. And he told me that simple saying is simple but it means so much, man, and it's one of those gems that just stuck with me for the rest of my life. And another gem he told me is don't do with your brother as you don't want done to you. So as far as, like, oppressing people, doing certain things, I had to really wake up and say, yo, what am I doing that for? Like, this is what they was trying to do to me, so that's what I was doing. But is it right? Hell no. You need to you need to feed somebody. Do something good. Make 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 some good karma come your way. You know, give somebody that don't have nothing some food. You know what I'm saying? Make him think differently. You know, make him want to do the same thing that you're doing. Show some positive light. And I think that's what it is. And our culture, where we come from, it's a negative, negative, negative. Instead of, yo, let's uplift each other. We could do better. Let's work. And one minute left. All right. So, all right, all right. So, law, say where to you, my friend. I want one day to meet you again. Say long, farewell, so long, my friend. One day, one day, we will meet again. To the younger me, I wanna show you who I be. To the, to the younger me, I wanna show you who I be. Yeah, it's me, the one and only D. Rezzy, yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's me. And I want to show kids that are going through the same thing that I went through as a kid. Listen, there's a way out. All you got to do is think outside the box. And as long as we can think out the box, out the, outside the box, I promise you, success is inevitable.